Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome on the Culture News. My name is David Cerrero, and I have the pleasure today on iHeartRadio to have over the phone the supra talented, of course you know her, of course you love her. She's absolutely amazing. Her name is Madame Gandhi. Madame Gandhi, Gandhi is spelled, of course, G A N D H I. She has released a lot, a lot of beautiful music, but very recently, she has just released Visions Remix, which is a collection of remixes of Visions EP and a lot of wonderful tracks that she has done. For the people who don't know her, she is absolutely stunning. She has a website that you can definitely check her out. It's madamegandhi.com, and she has done quite a lot of things. She has been listed as a Forbes 30 Under 30 member, and she is a 2020 TED fellow, TED uh, fellow. Right now, over the phone, I know we catch her right when she's taking a break. She's right outside with us, the lovely Madame Gandhi. Madame Gandhi, how are you today? Hi, David. So nice to connect with you. It's really, really a pleasure with you. Thank you so much. I know we're catching you between uh, uh, two things, so we really appreciate that you taking some time with us. So, you know, one thing I would love to know is how did you start music? What brought you to become a musician? I remember uh, always loving the radio. I grew up in New York City, and I remember having this awesome bus driver, and we'd be kindergartners. And when we would pull up in front of the parents, he would play classical music, you know, and then as soon as we would pull away, he would turn it back to the hip hop station. So growing up in New York City, we were listening to whatever was the top 40 of the time, but also whatever was kind of the culture of the time. And music has so much potential to teach you somebody else's walk of life, teach you somebody else's experience and almost normalize many of the things that we think that we're going through alone. And as a young person, I picked up on that and I connected with it and I've been playing music ever since. And you connected uh, very beautifully. And what I like in you is that besides, of course, your beautiful music, is that you have this beautiful artistry. You're working, you're putting a lot of effort on your visuals. I see your music videos. They are always very uh, creative, almost like a a piece of uh, contemporary art, uh, almost like a uh, Marina Abramovic, uh, in a way, you know, the way you, you, you work really as a, as a visual artist. Do you like to combine uh, both your music and the visual art world? Absolutely. I think being a child of the 90s, music videos were such an important part of the music industry that I always wanted to have strong music videos. I think beyond just uh, using a visual to amplify the message and meaning of the music itself, uh, we also, as artists, have the ability to describe and paint the world we wish we, li- we wish lived in. And for my music video, Waiting For Me, which we just put out fairly recently, I show a world in which we have young school children marching up and down and kind of ro- learning in robotic ways, like I did when I was a kid and having to wear a uniform, and then kind of like leaving that world and being in freedom and being in nature and like wearing self-expressive, bright, colored outfits and being in unity, but also standing very firm in your own identity and drumming and and being collaborative. So I do love to use my music videos to show an alternative and to paint the world that I wish we lived in. Absolutely. And I must say, I'm a huge fan of what you're doing. And I watch uh, a lot of your work and and I listen to it a lot, of course. So if you see about 1.2 million views, it probably comes from me. You know, <laughs> you're hilarious probably... and you're so supportive. Thank you, David. <laughs> it probably Thank comes you. from me. So, no, no, my pleasure. So, one, one thing you also uh, made yourself very known with, and, and we're so grateful to you for that, is you also use your platform as an artist to, to spread the beautiful uh, message about uh, gender, about equality, about uh, all of these uh, very important subjects that still. In, in America, we, I mean, I see this from the uh, immigrant eye probably that we still see people struggling with, with these, with gender and everything. What do you think in, in a modest way? What would you be, you think, the, the, the solution? Because this is something that you have uh, studied. 
I mean, there's so much to talk about. I think in general, my mission is really about personal liberation. And I do spend a lot of time analyzing that liberation through the lens of gender. I think gender is fascinating. I think the degree to which we limit people's gender and control it is problematic. I think, uh, you know, we've always lived in kind of a system where masculinity is prioritized, you know, being being the man was always desirable for like, like phrases in our culture, like man up or don't be such a pussy are things that reiterate these problematic binaries and hierarchies. And I think kind of the movement that I'm seeing right now on the ground that's so liberating is folks rejecting gender, taking on pronouns like they, them, uh, you know, di- dis- disrupting the binary and saying, actually, my gender is fluid. The way I identify is fluid. The people I'm attracted to uh, might c- conform to d- different genders on different days based on how they feel. And that is radical, and it shouldn't be, uh, but it is. And a lot of the folks whose work inspire me, they might wear makeup one day. They might, uh, you know, have hair on their legs the next day. Like, we should be able to just be free in our identity. And I do believe that that message is for everybody, no matter your gender, no matter your uh, background. Well, I can tell you if I don't put my hair nicely, uh, nobody is going to talk to me because <laughs> my, my hair is really a mess if I don't put the gel on my hair. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I, I think, I, yeah, totally. I think there's a lot of, like, constrictions when it comes to that. And, and you know, I did my TED Talk uh, as part of the fellowship program this year. Obviously, it was virtual because of the quarantine, uh, but it was a pleasure to get on the main stage and really question uh, lyrics in all types of genre of music that we listen to and say, you know, in the same way that the consumers are now more educated about the food we eat and the kinds of things we put into our body, why isn't there a larger conversation about the degree to which we tolerate normalized misogyny in the music industry without questioning it or unpacking it? And this is stuff that's casually played, you know, in gyms, in restaurants, in supermarkets, in, you know, uh, Uber and Lyft rides. And not to say that, of course, this is a, you know, you could phrase it as like a first world problem, uh, but at the same time, it's like whatever is made in the United States is exported to the rest of the world. And so gender starts here. And the way we understand our identities start here. And music is one of the most effective ways to communicate radical information. Exactly. And so that's why I choose music as, as my medium. Exactly. And we are so grateful that you, that you chose music. So now let's go back really to your beautiful music. And we're going to play a lot of it because, you know, I, I, I love you. You know, so I'm going to play a lot, a lot of your beautiful music. So this wonderful, wonderful new, uh, I would say, EP of yours uh, called Vision Remix. Uh, what, what brought you, what gave you that desire to do uh, a remix of all this wonderful music of yours? I put out Visions in 2019. It was also, it was my second EP. Uh, and I knew the songs were great, but I also knew being a DJ myself, it's sometimes harder to DJ songs that not necessarily are appropriate for the dance floor. And so I wanted to get uh, producers from around the world who really inspired me to each pick a song and remix it so that it would have kind of more of a dance feel, whether that's for fitness classes or going for your run or uh, dancing or for DJs or for choreographers. I really wanted to have higher energy remixes that amplify the percussion, amplify the tempo, and, and can live in a different world. Um, as someone who bla- values fitness and DJing and dancing myself, I was like, listen, I'll be the first to say that only some of my songs really can you dance to. I think there's a lot of ones that are more vibey and, and less of that high, high energy. And so that was the intention. And then secondary to that, uh, you know, only 2% of the entire world's music is produced by women. And that means even smaller percentage of that music is produced by folks who identify as gender non-conforming or trans. And so we do have to be intentional about programming and providing opportunity to each other. And so that's why I intentionally sought out female identifying producers to each remix the record and chose folks from international backgrounds from around the world. And I totally uh, agree with you, and I'm so glad that you, you, you're doing all of that. I'm pretty sure uh, something is telling me that the fact that you were so DJing uh, made you a better musician after, because you see the audience, you know, you have to, 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 to feel a little bit what they want, you know, if they want, uh, you know, some, uh, some heavy beats or they want something more, uh, more regular, more flow, et cetera, you you, I'm sure it made you a little bit different the way you will write your music in the future, right? Yes, I think they're both connected. I actually feel that because I was a performer first for so many years, 
that it actually may be a better DJ because I'm not afraid oh, yeah. to connect connect with the audience and look people in the eye. And of course, you're absolutely right, read the body language. But I've actually found it very challenging in the virtual opportunities that I've had to do these like DJ live streams because you're just like performing to a camera. There's not like a mutual feedback mechanism uh, where know, I'm responding to the energy of the audience. I think uh, what you're saying is also true, though, because then DJing and seeing what people react to on a dance floor um, shows me the kind of stuff that does work based on the context. And so then as a producer, you go and make that accordingly, or you know who to reach out to to reproduce your songs and remix your songs like we did for this album. Well, you did uh, an absolutely amazing, amazing work. And we want more of you. We want more albums. We want more work, more music videos. And more of your talks, more of your, uh, uh, you know, speaking voice and singing voice. You have great songs. There is one called Young Indian, Very Beautiful, See Me Through, Top Not, Turn Up, uh, Waiting for Me, a lot of beautiful musicians, also uh, producers collaborating uh, with you. Uh, bad habits also, but let me tell you, the best habit you can have is to listen to uh, the lovely Madame Gandhi, Madame Gandhi, Kiran, Kiran, she's absolutely wonderful. And guess what? She holds a bachelor degree in mathematics and an MBA from Harvard. So uh, I'm sure you know how to negotiate very good contracts, you know, doing the math. <laughs> you must be very you're good hilarious, with that. David. No, you're, no, you're, 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 you're so supportive. Your, your your positivity is so vibrant. It's so needed in these days. Your energy is just infectious. I'm so uh, happy to talk love. to you. Oh, my love. Listen, it's all, it, it's entirely your fault, you know, because <laughs> your music <laughs> puts me in a, in a great mood and we want, everyone wants to be uh, better. I want everybody, everybody to go and purchase and stream the album of Madame Gandhi, okay? You go on uh, on every social, I'm uh, sorry, on every platform, Madame Gandhi, Gandhi like the, the great man, uh, G-A-N-D-H-I, and Kiran is absolutely wonderful. You can uh, give us more of um, your social media handle, where we can follow you. Yeah, of course, on Madame Gandhi, and for anybody who's listening, I always check my messages, I love continuing the conversation. I love hearing which part of the music resonates with you. And David, I'm appreciative that you're talking about uh, wellness and feeling good and kicking bad habits because that's definitely the lyrics and the focus of the next album that I've been working on. So that's cool that you picked up on that. Always, my dear, always. And I appreciate that you that you took some time, you know, during during a break to uh, really, uh, I hope we didn't disturb your snack, you know, <laughs> but you, you took some time to, to be so with funny. us today. Yeah. Uh, I want you to know this is your show, and we're going to play a lot of your music uh, today. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is David Ferriro. I had the pleasure to have today on my heart radio the very talented Madame Gandhi. Follow her on her website, madamegandhi.com. Listen to her music. I love this woman. She's absolutely uh, marvelous. Je t'aime, je t'aime aussi, je t'aime. Oh, merci. merci. <laughs> merci We're going to speak French. Ouais. I know you study French, right? Nous, nous pouvons pratiquer. Nous Mais allons Dieu parler en français. Nous euh, allons parler en français. Absolutely. Parfait. And right now, we are playing Madame Gandhi's music. Stay tuned for more music. David Serrero on iHeartRadio. Radio. 